Okay, I'd like to call the meeting, a special meeting of the Urbana City Council to order. Would the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Ammons? Here. Mr. Brown? Here. Mr. Jacobson? Here. Mr. Madigan? Here. Ms. Marlin? Here. Mr. Roberts? Here. Mr. Smythe? Here. Mayor Pressing? Here. The first item is the approval of the minutes of the previous meeting, December 16th, 2013. I'll move approval. Second. Motion by Robert, seconded by Ammons. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion carries. Petitions and communications. Is there anyone who would like to address the Urbana City Council? Do you have any cards, Phyllis? No. Okay. I don't have any either. I think four, four they turned four them into Charlie. I've got everything for the committee meeting, but you could switch to the council if you prefer. Yeah, that's probably more this one will make the council. Okay. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah
why don't you fix the potholes? Well, I think you should fix the potholes, but I think that it's important as a political unit that the the Urbana City Council could reflect some of the opinions, and uh, I, I'm not calling for immediate action on this, but I'm, I'm really disgusted with the servile and docile press uh, uh, that nobody knows about this issue. Uh, Gloria Steinem actually had a New York Times piece and was interviewed on <laughs> CNN, but that's the last and uh, anybody's heard of this, uh, this big struggle that's going on that uh, will affect the entire world politics um, for so many. I, I, is that not five minutes yet? Somebody's watching a clock here. <laughs> it's the clerk. Oh, I have one minute left. Well, I don't need it, so. <laughs> but, um, but again, I, I really urge people to consider something other than this uh, uh, email list. We need to see what, saw what happened with the uh, Champaign County Board when they were using, you know, email to, this, to not have meetings in reference right. to the jail <laughs> building program that um, didn't exist. <laughs> Uh, but it did, and uh, they, they got around open meetings. I just think that uh, Urbana should uh, champion a, a new method of uh, making sure that uh, it's entirely, the discussion is entirely transparent. So thanks for your attention. Okay, thank you very much. Eric, I think so I have a question for you, Paul. Paul, it's just a clarification. For the record, um, I have never texted another city council person from here but I do occasionally during meetings take a notification. Mm. I, I do occasionally text my wife to give mm. her an update on when to expect me home. Right. Okay. Well, I, and I know people w might have some urgency that they have to be notified about, but, but yeah, I'd, I'd, it'd be better probably not to use them at all. But if you guys want to have a, a conversation underneath the meeting and text across, I think it should be transparent and should go up on this blog. So. Uh, we, don't, yeah. we don't do it. I've, I've never sent a text to anybody else. Okay, meeting, right. Well, them. apparently uh, they got their toys in Champagne, and I just wanted to see if there was any policy. It seems like a f official policy on on use might be good in advance. There, there's so the Open Meetings Act, and mm. we get training on that every year. Right. So Has that's that why we, it's never been a problem in Urbana. Yeah, we just don't do it because it would violate the Open Meetings Act. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, we learned that very early on, so we, we've never done it. Okay. Well, but, but what about email that circulated amongst y'all? I mean, this, how, how People are very careful not to send it out to the whole group if it's a discussion. It has to be one-on-one. -on -one. Mm. So and we, then, do, and then we get isn't. training from our attorneys on this. Okay. All right. Oh, very good. Okay. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else? Okay. Um, unfinished business, continued discussion of IDOT. I was asked to uh, work with Carol and Bill, and I sent out um, a draft, which anybody, if they don't have it with them, I'd be happy to give them a copy. And then Bill has some other suggestions, so how do you want to start? Yes. Bill? Um, yeah, I, we had a couple different versions, and I tried to combine them a little bit and put it in resolution form, so I guess it's up to the council what we want to do as far as um, moving one of these forward or pass it. I, I guess, can we pass it tonight or we would have to advance? Well, you know, it was the, the motion <coughs> which was kind of um, interesting. It was to, to keep it in committee until the council meeting of January 6th. But since we really haven't had this out in the public, I would say that what's on the agenda is, is proper. It's continued discussion. And so you might want to revisit it at the committee before you decide what to vote on so everybody has a chance to know exactly what we're talking about. We need to get it out there on the website. So maybe you can just read it, read what's being recommended so far. Uh, which one? <laughs> yeah, well, I, would you like me to talk about mine first? Do you want to go with yours or what? How do you want to do it? Um, okay. Why don't you talk about yours? Okay. We... This was, um, I talked with Carol individually and then with Bill, and we sent emails individually. <coughs> so mine says, the city of Urbana, uh, I felt from the discussion, I looked at the whole discussion on the 13th. I think it was the 13th or was it the 16th? Well, anyway, the last um, committee, the whole meeting, and it f I felt that from the discussion that the council members wanted a broader focus than just the IDOT number because we're talking about 
a whole problem for society on bias. So the way I did this was to talk about what the title should be. I proposed, and I'm certainly open. I know uh, Mike Madigan had a didn't particularly like this suggestion, so he might have another thought. But uh, mine says the city of Urbana will establish a social justice task force for the purpose of studying traffic stop statistics, incarceration rates, high school graduation rates, and employment statistics in order to identify accurate measures of racial disparities and establish benchmarks to measure progress in reducing disparities. That, that actually a lot of that was written by Bill. The task force will identify factors that contribute to disparities and prioritize what remedies would have the greatest impact, including those which the city may implement on its own and those which will require action at the state or federal level. The following is an outline of the proposed research. One, evaluate Illinois Department of Transportation IDOT trans traffic stop data in order to increase understanding of how the ratio is calculated and whether it is a reliable indicator of racial bias and provide guidance on eliminating any, that should be any, racially disparate impacts which may be identified. For purposes of understanding the context of the Urbana data, the task force should analyze comparable data for the City of Champaign, the University of Illinois, and Champaign County for a full understanding of differences in both reported traffic stops and underlying population data. The City Council and the task force will develop specific questions to help direct the analysis. Two, the overall social context of Urbana will be described with comparisons over time, for example, from 2000 to 2010 based on census data and any more recent data which may be available. A, and this is actually something that's in the um, goals already. It was a community report card. We haven't finished it yet, but it seems like a logical place to put it. Uh, incarceration rates by race, how many Urbana residents were in the county jail for the past year, what were they charged with, what were they sentenced to, where were they born, what is their educational level, what was their reported occupation, and how have these statistics changed over the past 10 years? What was the total jail population for the past year? Where did the inmates list as their home address and how many re were reported as homeless? Then employment and unemployment rates in Urbana by race and age. Uh, high school graduate graduation rates from public and private schools by race for Urbana residents and poverty levels in Urbana by race and age. And I think that we also need to um, go by a suggestion of Bill, which was um, specifically to look at the, the students uh, at the university as a separate group because they've got, they're very different by um, race and age and also income levels. It's just, and they don't drive as much as the rest of the population, yet they are half of the population of Urbana. So we do need to look at different groups. The task force shall be composed of 11 members. At least two members will have education and expertise in statistics. One council member may serve on the task force, and I've already asked Eric Jacobson if he would be willing to do so, and he would be. Other members shall be chosen from applicants based up upon their knowledge and understanding of sociology, law enforcement, or other relevant experience, and a demonstrated ability to be objective and respectful in dealing with people from other backgrounds, cultures, and opinions. Applicants are not required to live in the city of Urbana, but should be representative of the ethnic mix of Urbana. Appointments to the task force and selection of a chair will be made by the mayor with the approval of the city council. Applications shall be received through February 2014, and the task force will be appointed in March 2014. The task force will establish a regular time and place for a monthly meeting in city facilities following the Open Meetings Act. Meetings shall be video recorded with video posted to the Urbana website. Staff from the Urbana Human Relations Commission and Civilian Police Review Board will provide administrative support. The task force will provide at least bi-monthly progress reports to the city council. The task force will report preliminary findings in writing on or before March 31st, 2015 with a public presentation and opportunities for the public to ask questions. The report will be available for public comment for a period of 30 days and written comment will be received, will be included in the final report. And I will say that the task force would be following the Open Meetings Act, which means that it would be open to the public and they would have public participation. So, Bill? Okay, so 
Um, I took aspects of that and tried to um, summarize maybe the um, the biggest change is trying to re reduce the scope a little bit and um, not expand it quite as much to look at the various statistical measures of um, of the different social um, things like incarceration rates, unemployment, employment, graduation rates. Uh, a lot of that's been done and it, it would probably be good to um, have a summary of that. I don't know if the task force needs to do it or if the HRC could do it or they could work together on it, but it could be presented uh, with their final report probably. Um, so should I just read the whole thing? or? So what you're reading is a combination of what the mayor's presented, what I gave you, and then yours. Yeah. Okay. This is, so what, this is. What I presented was also a combination. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can decide which parts we want, I guess. Okay, so this is a resolution authorizing the creation of a task force to recommend how the city can improve understanding of data compiled in the IDOT traffic study and respond to concerns raised by social service organizations. Whereas the city of Urbana has reviewed reports from the Illinois Department of Transportation IDOT statistical study of traffic stops since its beginning in 2004, and whereas the city also collected data on its own for several years prior, and whereas the city paid for a statistical analysis of the IDOT study covering years 2007 to 2009, and that study raised additional questions that can only be explored further utilizing local knowledge of demographics, driving, and enforcement patterns. And whereas on October 7th, 2013, the city council was presented a petition by social justice groups that are well established and active locally and have historically been well informed of racial justice issues such petition asking for creation of a citizen's traffic stop data committee. And whereas upon discussion, council members recognize that unique local demographics such as student population and commuting patterns affecting, affect the predicted racial composition of drivers in Urbana and social and economic factors may also influence the racial makeup of drivers stopped for traffic stops. And whereas upon further discussion of the Urbana City Council recognizes the need for a focused task force to provide additional information to the city. And whereas the city takes seriously the intent embodied in its human rights ordinance to end discrimination, recognizes the potential for discrimination in routine policing activities and strives to prevent discrimination, now therefore be it re resolved by the City of Council of the City of Urbana, Illinois as follows. Section one, the City of Urbana will establish a traffic stop data task force to identify and study any racial disparities that may exist in local traffic stop data for the purpose of understanding the source and cause of the disparity. Section two, the task force will examine multiple aspects of the IDOT traffic stop data, including not just the reported ratio based on race, but also including driver age, residence, stop time, stop location, reason for stop, vehicle age, and any of the dozens of data items collected in the data the committee finds useful. In order to provide a broader social context and to allow for comparisons and alternate analysis. The task force will also compile statistics from existing sources such as census data, unemployment data, high school graduation rates, and incarceration data from the September 2013 study of Champaign County Justice System. That was the ILPP study that was just completed last fall. For additional con social context, the task force will evaluate input from the community describing personal experiences and impressions of traffic stops. Section three, the task force shall be composed of 11 members, at least two members. That's really about the same as <laughs> the previous one. It's probably uh, identical, right? Uh, I think down toward the bottom, yeah, there was a suggestion change appointments to task force will be made by the mayor with the approval of city council. App applications shall be received through February 2014, and the task force will be appointed in March 2014. The task force will select a chair from among, among its members. Section four, Regular times, same as the other one. Section five, the task force will provide at least bi-monthly progress reports to the city council. The city council may submit questions to be researched by the task force. Section six, the task force will report preliminary findings, including any policy recommendations in writing on or before April 30th, 2015. I think I added a month to that with a public presentation and opportunities for public task questions. The report would be available for public comment for a period of 30 days and written comment received would be included in the final report. Diane. 
Well, my comment on this is that I would support the language of um, this uh, second resolution, mainly because my concern with um, the mayor's proposal was that it did broaden the scope of the task force, and I really believe it's important for us to focus on the issue that was brought to us last fall, and that is traffic stops. And so um, we can look at traffic stops in, in the related social context, but I'm happy to see that this second resolution focuses on traffic stops, and we have an opportunity to really drill down and look at this question once and for all, and um, I think this second resolution gets at the important task at hand. So I, I'd be willing to support this one. Dennis? Yeah. I also think that uh, the document that Bill drafted seems to be um, f focused and fair and um, a little more to the point of uh, the task that we were given originally. Um, and I like the, the freedom of the committee to pick its own chairman. I think that's an important aspect of its, of its uh, constituency. Um, we realize that uh, all the people who have uh, asked for the task force to be formed are free to apply to be on the commission. And uh, we, we would encourage them to do so if this is uh, going to be a truly a representative um, body. So I think that we've kind of seen a couple of different versions of it. And I think this seems to be well crafted and fairly uh, very well balanced um, and more focused. So I think it sounds like the best one. Eric? Well, I guess that uh, I do you know, I, I want us to to look uh, squarely and honestly at the issue of the traffic stops. That being said, it's, I think once this committee starts to meet, it may be in the situation of something like, you know, you go to put, you repair the siding on your house and you discover all sorts of things underneath that you didn't quite know were there. So uh, I would like to give the committee the freedom to uh, maybe explore things that emerge in their initial conversations or in the initial feedback that the committee gets uh, from the public. I, I don't know exactly how to word that, but I'd, I'd like that to be um, I'd like that to be built in. I guess I'd also like to comment on the notion that in one spring we will settle once and for all anything about the history of uh, these issues that you know have taken literally you know centuries to uh, uh, to work themselves out. I think that one of the best things that could come from this committee is the framework for a continuing discussion across the community, a continuing means of communication between the different communities that we have, ranging from different ethnic communities, from the student body, uh, the people we charge with enforcing the law, that, that we could open up a continual pathway for constructive dialogue. Uh, we're not going to get agreement on everything, but we could aspire to a situation where everybody actually understands the perspective of other people who are involved in this. Uh, and in the immediate context, the perspective of the police officer and the perspective of the person who is has who is stopped, but more broadly, uh, the perspective of all of us as we go about the city, who encounter people who are very different from ourselves. And uh, I think we need that, that we need a platform for a continual open dialogue to build you know, trust and to build perspective among different people. So I'd like for this committee to at least to, to have the freedom to, um, to develop that, or maybe even have a mandate to, uh, if they can, uh, build a framework for continued discussion between people of different races, different perspectives in, in all kinds of ways. 
Charlie? Yeah, uh, let me, I'm gonna tackle something I think maybe Bill would address as the author of this, but the way, and going backwards here, I think that the task force needs to tackle the problem at hand first, and uh, if other things come out of it over time, maybe that will develop. I mean, you know, a year from now, and based on the, the every other month reports, uh, we can see where things are going. Um, I think the issue that you've raised is one that the police department and others in the city have tried to tackle uh, through time. And maybe this is yet another attempt at, at finding a good way to establish dialogue. Um, we have a very diverse community and it changes all the time because the students move in and out and, and, and uh, faculty move in and out and people move in. It's a very transient community. And um, so, so maybe this can get to it. But I think we have to tackle the issue at hand first and then see what develops. I think section two, the way I read it, and partly there's a, the, 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 the uh, addition uh, and to allow for comparisons and alternate anal analyses, that was something I asked uh, to be included here. And I think the combination of, of the first, second, and third sentences here addresses some of the issues you've raised. It allows the task force to go out and look at some alternate analyses, get additional data, you know, if they want to, if they want to do comparisons against Champaign or the county or whatever, uh, the state, uh, they're free to do that as they see fit. So I think that the, the, the task force is given flexibility here in section two, reading it in its broadest way. Uh, I think that's what Bill was intending and that's, and with the addition that I asked for, which is included here, I think it's, it's enough to let the committee uh, figure its own path. I don't know if Bill, if I've addressed that correctly, Bill, or not. Yeah, I think I was trying to leave it a little bit open because I think it will probably evolve um, in response to um, council input with their bi-monthly reports. We would probably have input. There would be a lot of public input, so I imagine um, hopefully they'll have a little bit of flexibility to um, expand or, or refine their mission. Um, I, mean, I think in general people tend to look at this issue in a couple of different ways. You look at it as either, you know, the police are doing something wrong and that's why these minority numbers are higher, or you look at it as, oh, it's just a descriptive statistic, it's just like unemployment, the minority numbers are higher because it's a social, um, you know, it's a um, product of, of the social conditions. And I think what we're trying to do is ask the task force to uh, obviously the answer is somewhere in between there and that we're asking the task force to kind of um, figure out what issues go into that and uh, what kind of policies we, we might be able to change or come up with that would help address some of that. So um, I, yeah, I, I think you're right. I think the task force needs to have some flexibility. Carol? I also wanted to um, just for the public who didn't get to see this document yet because it's in draft form, uh, I am going to um, certainly want us to put the document out for public comment before we do anything else. Um, but a couple of things that were raised in us attempting to do this, although I do agree uh, that there are many areas of disparity that can be studied. There, there are a plethora of areas and certainly does not preclude any open body like there is a platform that we have which is the HRC that has taken up issues that we have brought to the HRC here in Urbana which is a benefit to the community so I've never experienced the HRC saying you know we don't want to study employment uh, disparities um, so I don't believe in this task force it's necessary for us to put all of those parameters there. However, if they emerge, as we saw in the jury study in Champaign County, they started off with this very linear focus, but it did take them to the state. It took them to all these different areas that impact juries. And, and they didn't limit their work because it moved them around. Uh, and I would imagine this will not be limited either. I also want to dispel for those who uh, attempt to put this out is that the goal of the task force, my initial thought on it, Bill's thought, and I, I'm hoping the mayor's thought, is that we are not in any way, shape, or form trying to uh, issue some process of discipline for police officers or direct their day-to-day -day or tell them what to do 
Our goal as a council is to talk to the chief of police who works for the council and say, here are things that have come to us from the community that you have to consider in your day-to-day -day operations. But this came to us from not only the public, but we've received this every year for the last several years. And at this point, it's the council's responsibility to respond to the recommendation and find out what the driving factors are behind the disparity, which is why we came up with the task force in the first place. So it's not um, to limit or to um, say you have bad officers or any of those type of comments that will make an assumption that our goal is to make Urbana look bad, our police department look bad, or any other such antic that is used to keep us from really responding to the real crises that may be affecting one community as opposed to another. That is not the goal. I believe the recommendation as it's been blended, I can accept, although I've shared with Bill that part of it I don't necessarily agree with, but you can't get everything that you want in every part of the process. You have to be able to negotiate your way to an end result. And I think Bill's is the best end result that we can put forward and let it develop as it um, is going to develop. Charlie? Well, based on what Carol just said, I'd like, like to move this to the next council meeting for approval. Second. Okay. Um, any other discussion? So you're talking about the one that Bill just wrote? Yep. Okay. Um, move it to the next council meeting for approval. Okay. Any discussion? All the, oh, Eric? Yeah, my own, the only question I would raise about that is um, will we, um, can we, can we post it immediately as opposed to waiting until the meeting notice so that the public has a little more chance to weigh in? Um, I think we can post it immediately, but you also might want to have comment on it at the next committee meeting because that gives you more chance for people to respond. Well, then and there's another committee meeting before the council meeting. Mm. No, there is oh. a next council no, meeting okay. would be next no, Monday. All right, we're, we're yeah. off. Yeah. Yeah. We got another that's, schedule here. That's yeah. that's what's that's what's okay. confusing this. If we yeah. want if we want okay. we could we could send this to committee in two weeks. Yeah, uh, I but think then it'll be it'd be three better weeks before it'd be approved. Well, you know that you put a, a date of April in there anyway, right? For the ending. Yeah. So it just depends on how much time do you want people to have to comment I'm, on I'm it. I'm flexible. If we want to send it to committee in two weeks with this one, or we can put it up on the web and well, we should it put it up on the web so people can yeah. comment, and they might want to. Um, so the next meeting will be the council meeting then right. yeah. on the twenty first. Right, or we could send so this that to gives us or we one could send week. Gives us one week, or we could send it to committee on the twenty eighth, which would send it to February's yeah. first February meeting. I mean, meeting you could do it approval. that way because it gives people more time if yeah. they want to know about it. Well, yes, I'd, I'd defer to Carol's. Uh, on this one so, so I, I would suggest um, posting it immediately which would give people a week to mm -hmm. comment uh, if in a week we get a sense from the response that we've gotten that it actually needs to season a little bit more that it could be put over to the next council meeting That's or we could act on it yeah. yeah we could okay okay everybody understand the motion all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion carries. Okay, the next item. She's, they're sending it to the next council meeting, which is next Tuesday. Okay. And we're going to put it on the, um, they're going to put it on the website so people can comment on it. If they submitted something. Okay. Um, the next item is um, new business and appointment to the Sustainability Advisory Commission. I am recommending Brian Sproul. Move approval. I'll second. Okay, motion by Marlin, seconded by Roberts. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion carries. I believe the next three items have been um, the person who is promoting these um, Unit, this planned unit development is not here and would like to be present when they're discussed. Is Libby here? Oh, you want to take them off and move them to the next um, council meeting? 
They've asked if they can be continued to February 3rd when they're back in town. Okay. So, so we can items. just do that? Or do yeah, we I'll move on? items 2, 3, and 4 to the February 3rd council meeting. Second. Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion carries. I would like to uh, read something that we got by email. Um, this was to the Director of Public Works, Bill Gray, um, regarding the professional performance of the street maintenance teams during the last snowstorm. The evening of January 10th, I observed a team of two men physically removing slush from the storm drains at Oregon and Cedar. There was enough time to go out and thank them before they moved on. The snow plow drivers are continuously moving, continually moving, and I never get <coughs> to thank them personally. In this correspondence, I would like to thank the entire department for the excellent and conscientious work performed during all the seasons. Every direction I looked during the storm, there was a public works truck clearing the streets and putting ice melt down. There has been a special effort around Leal School to provide safe pedestrian traffic for children and parents. During the period of leaf fall, the leaf sweeping from the streets was also commendable. I live on the corner and catch blown in leaves from all directions. In particular, when leaves fall on the streets, the wind can carry them onward, covering my yard. Not only do I appreciate the street sweep, but also the leaf collections available to residents. While I'm writing, I should mention the recycle collections weekly and the crew who repair the streets filling in potholes and cracks. Uh, there are going to be a lot of those. <laughs> I suppose other residents of Urbana are as grateful as I and perhaps do not speak out. Living in Urbana and paying my real estate taxes is painless when they come back to me in such sub superb city service. I hope all the employees of the work teams can see this thank you note and, I, and know how much they are appreciated. Oh, and I wrote to her and I think thanking her for taking the time to appreciate our crews because they did a fantastic job. Eric. So I am moved, uh, Bill, to thank you and your team publicly for figuring out how not to toss snow into the driveway <laughs> of my constituent who has come to me, who came to me with that problem. So thank you very much. And, and please pass my thanks on to your, your folks. And I'll just, I'll just do the same because I got an opportunity to ride this time, Diane. It was superb. We had a ball. My son also had a chance to ride, so it was really great. And that we got major compliments on how quickly Urbana cleared our streets. Ours are really, really quick. I almost got stuck on the other side of the other city. <laughs> <laughs> right. But but Long we had ours, our, ours was very clean, so we had, a, we had a really nice time riding in the snowplow and just seeing how they uh, systematically, very carefully um, clear those streets and how quickly they do it. And I will say that we do get complaints from people about why wasn't their street done yeah. earlier. Yeah. And the Public Works Department actually has a program of rotating which residential streets they're going to start first each year. Uh, I think it's a very fair program. Their top priority is obviously the main arterials because the big goal is to get the streets clear so we can get emergency equipment through fire trucks and police cars. And uh, so there is a, a huge effort to be very fair about it. And um, we do not do the parking lots for the city parks. Those are the park districts responsibility and they do a good job. Okay, there being no further business, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>